Jumbo fellow adventurers, Mike Dooley, happy Monday. Time for a spiritual tune-up where I talk about metaphysical concepts, bring them down to earth for your traction to help you rock your life. All right, today's question is uh, on maybe my favorite topic of all, and it's something I mention a lot, which was pointed out, but perhaps I haven't put legs under the table in a little while. So put on your seatbelt because I am going to show you how powerful you are with indisputable evidence. Mike, is it true that our positive thoughts are more powerful than our negative thoughts? Mike, you've mentioned many times over the years that a positive thought or belief carries far more power than a thousand negative ones. Actually, more than 10,000 negative ones. In all my metaphysical studies, I have not seen this said elsewhere or, or else I did not absorb it as such. I would love to believe it to be so. Can you please share how you've come to believe, embrace, and to teach this? Oh my God, it's so cool to be on the cutting edge of sharing truth to the degree that no one else is sharing it at all, yet by the end of these 10 minutes, you will be hands down, no questions asked, a believer. Yes, our positivity, and I'm gonna define that word very importantly, is wildly more powerful than our negativity. As I often say, you don't have to worry that you worry. But let me share with you, and you're going to remember this, that roller coaster of emotion when you first came into truth. Do you remember? You were really annoying to all of your friends. You were like, I knew it. I knew I was powerful. I knew I wasn't being judged. I know that my, my dreams can come true, that there's a reason for this this fantastic dance of life on earth. It's all playing to my greater good. My thoughts become things. There's a law of attraction. Hallelujah. You remember that? And then maybe two days, two weeks into that, you suddenly realized that you think a lot of negative stuff. And you're like, if my thoughts become things and I'm just having these fights with my so-and-so, my friends, my family, I'm having these arguments, I'm worried about paying my rent, oh my God, I'm doomed! I have all this negativity in my head. That was me 40 years ago. And I would panic and I would freak out and I would try to be positive and it'd be like slipping in this nightmare where I was just losing traction and I was falling, falling, falling. Um, but a funny thing happened on my way down, if you will. I never really landed. I never really fell. Not to the degree justified by my natural inborn abilities to be afraid of everything, to self-doubt, to self-loathe, to be terrified of life and all the bad stuff that could possibly happen to you. Holy mackerel. In spite of all my fears, I was generally really successful. I was like, that does not add up. And so I went on this like just kind of deep contemplative thought, which is like the, 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 the place to go for truth and answers. Everyone, you've got this ability. I'm not different. Think about something that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. If thoughts become things, if believe in ye shall receive, and I believe I'm going down and people are making fun of me behind my back and that I can't say three sentences in a row to make sense, and yet those don't come to pass, something is afoot. And oh my God, you are gonna love this. Okay, so I noticed that there's a, a Mark Twain quote that's very, very famous. Let me read this short quote to you. I've had a lot of worries in my life, most of which never happened. Woohoo! That's me. How is that positive? And at first I drew a slightly off conclusion. I said, it must be that our positive thoughts are way more powerful than our negative thoughts. But immediately I slapped that down because what is positivity but judgment and subjectivity? And that is different from one person to the next to the next. One person's positive thought is someone else's nightmare. 
indisputable. It's purely subjective. So how can you say positivity, particularly in a universe that's non-judgmental, right? It's non-judgmental. So to say positive thoughts are more powerful than negative thoughts is bogus. But something's going on. And then it dawned on me. As I teach and others teach, there is a truth in all things, time and space. It is absolute. It is objective. It is stark. It is black and white. It is benign. It is empowering. It is awesome. There is a truth. There may be many roads to Rome, but none of those roads changes Rome. There may be many ways to truth, but none of those ways change the truth. So don't think I'm starting a religion. I'm not talking about religions. I'm not talking about spiritual perspectives. I'm talking about the pillars of reality. That A is A. That thoughts become things. Okay? Uh, that we are all of God, by God, pure God. That we are all divine. That we are all one and connected. That everything is working to our greater God, greater good. Those are the absolute immovable pillars, even if you don't believe in them. They rule your life. So, given that there, there are these truths, and that we are of God, by God, pure God, that either you believe in intelligence or it's all random chance chaos, and your eyes tell you immediately there's beauty and intelligence in every single thing happening out there. Okay, so that nixes random chaos. All right, we never would have made it this far if it was random chaos. So there's a divine intelligence that we are born of through which all good things, all things happen. Therefore, it is indisputably true that we are careening through these kaleidoscopes, these jungles of time and space for the joy of it, for the love of it, for the fun of it. Even scientists know that time, space, and matter are relative, therefore illusionary. They're not what we think they are. They are not bedrock reality. Consciousness and intelligence is bedrock reality. The mind of God, which we are but a part of, is bedrock reality. So there is this beautiful scenario that's indisputable on this planet with 100 million different species, all cohabitating, uh, symbiotic relationships everywhere, flowers and birds and bees and oceans and snowfalls and prairie dogs. And it's so beautiful. We could just talk about this for, for the rest of my life and, and just cry nonstop. There's so much beauty everywhere. And therefore, you realize that you came from on high. And the reason you're here had to be you chose to be here or God chose to be here. It didn't just happen. Oh my God, how did that happen? You chose to be here for incredibly loving, beautiful, adventurous reasons. You are like this tidal wave of energy cascading, careening through realities, eternal in nature. Your focus is creating and projecting your experience. This is who you really are. And therefore, when you think a thought or have a dream that is in alignment with truth, okay, not a positive thought or a negative thought, that's subjective, a thought in alignment with the beauty and the magnificence and the power that brought you here. When you think thoughts like that, which is totally your nature, boom, 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 they become things and circumstances relatively easy. Yes, you have to deal with time and space because we bought that ticket. We don't want spontaneous manifestations here. That's where we came from. Here, we want the challenge. We want the adventure. So thoughts become things when your thoughts are in alignment with truth. When you think thoughts that are out of alignment with truth, like, you know, life is stupid. People are mean. God is angry. I'm an idiot. I'll never do it. I'm too afraid. I'm too this. I'm too that. Those are lies. Those will always be lies. Those are your fleeting impressions, beliefs, perceptions of the moment. They don't stand a chance against the eternal nature of truth and your brilliant magnificence and beauty. Do you see thoughts in alignment with truth go with this torrent of energy that gets swept along into the beauty and majesty of creation? That's why you're here. Thoughts in contradiction to truth, like, you know, there's no point, there's no meaning, everybody's an idiot. 
Sorry, but those are really hard to become the things and events of our lives. You can do it. People have done it. But when you're just a little bit positive, knowing what we now know, who wouldn't be just a little bit positive? When you show up in spite of the odds, when you take baby steps, even though everybody wants what you want, holy mackerel, you start leveraging your, leveraging your true divinity and the positive, so-called positive. Generally, let's just make a generalization, excuse me. Generally, our so-called positive thoughts are in alignment with truth, right? They're in alignment. So that's where I get off saying our positive thoughts are 10,000 times more powerful than our negative thoughts. Okay, because I'm saying that our thoughts in alignment with our power and life's beauty, those are the positive thoughts. Okay, somebody could find a positive thought of somebody else's that's not really in alignment with truth, no question. But generally it's true. Now, here is the coup de grace. This is the absolute proof Proof is in the pudding. Sit back, prepare yourself, because I know it sounds like wishful thinking, and oh, wouldn't that be nice? And only if I was a little more spiritual, then I could tell. You're already killing it, right? Right? Give me a break. Give me a freaking break. If life was total chaos, and you think a thought, it's going to become a thing. That thought could be blue. That thought could be pink. That thought could be high. That thought could be low. That thought could be positive. That thought could be negative. We live in a non-judgmental world. That's where you are coming from. Oh my God, this is when you think you're doomed. Oh my God, well, why wouldn't that bad thought become a thing when this good thought I never give any credit to and it's easier to believe in the bad and oh my God, I'm doomed. But you're assuming that there is no truth that there is no tidal wave of intergalactic love that brought you here. You're assuming that you just showed up, life was here, and somehow you got, you draw the short straw. You're assuming that you're not a creator. You're assuming that life is pointless when you think everything is a 50-50 shot. Just because we live in a non-judgmental world, as I said in last week's tune-up, does not mean we live in a neutral world. We do not live in a neutral world. Therefore, we live in a non-neutral world, which is just fun playing with words, but it reveals and reflects the fact that we're God Almighty, come alive in the dream of life, here because we could, here because we knew what we were doing, here for the joy of it, to love and to be loved. So back to the proof. If you're still here, oh, this is the proof. If life was 50-50, you'd smile the same amount of time in a day that you frown. 50-50, right? You'd laugh just as much as you cry, but that's not ever been true. You smile at least 10,000 times more than you frown. You smile for no reason. You smile and people wonder what's going on with you. You laugh at least 10,000 times more than you cry. You have clarity 10,000 times more than you're totally lost in the dark. Woe is me. What's my name? That's never even happened. You have friends more than you're all alone, and you've never been all alone your entire life. There's always somebody to call, right? Somebody to call. You've never been like, well, I don't know any human beings. No one likes me. That's never even happened. What happened to 50-50? You have health more than you're sick. There's the proof. You're not healthy half the time and sick half the time. And as I love to point out, usually when you're sick, you're still healthy. So healthy that you can watch the internet and walk around the house in your pajamas and turn on Netflix even in sickness, you're healthy. You're killing it. You're crushing it. Look at your life. You're no 50-50 shot of chaos. You're just cruising through these jungles of time and space. And you're like, is it true that positive thoughts are more powerful? Like, come on, take stock. Don't be listening to what all the other people are telling you about life is hard and people are mean and God is angry. It's a bunch of crap. Just look at your life. And look at this. Even money. You've had money at least 10,000 times more than you've got none, okay? You might like more money, and sometimes the bank account was really low, or sometimes you didn't have a bank account, but you had something in your pocket. Even money, which is so hard to get, and everybody wants it. It's so elusive. You're killing it, right? You're killing it. Your life, all of our lives, are provide overwhelming evidence that our default settings are to thrive. And you didn't even know it. Can you imagine how unstoppable you're going to be now that you know it? Now that you see it, you take stock, you take inventory. You don't even need to worry that you worry. Now you know why I say that all the time. 
Your life is proof. And, and look at humanity right now. Okay, I've gone over 10 minutes. I'm at 15 minutes. I'm not stopping. Look at humanity. We have lived heretofore in this recorded history. There's been earlier civilizations that, that woo, they've done some amazing things, good and bad on earth. Many. Atlantis is just the beginning. But look at humanity as we know it. Okay, heretofore, most people either believe God was an angry white man with like juvenile, petty issues of being jealous and stuff, here to test you, torment you, and sentence you. Either most of humanity heretofore, recorded humanity, either believe God was an angry white man, that's probably 90% according to Pew studies, or 10% believe that life is a random chance accident, that, that it just is totally pointless, utterly meaningless. We're just lucky that to have evolved out of the ocean, which is pretty uh, ridiculous, beyond ridiculous. Uh, so even with those idiotic thoughts, we still have blown the lid off of surviving. We've blown the lid off of 50-50. Um, we have space stations. We have computers. We have Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Oh my God. If you're missing out on TikTok, you are missing out on the best social media out there. It's not even social media. It's the best entertainment in the world. Okay, I, I, I digress. Uh, we have DNA technology. We have, we are just so amazing that even in the height of our stupidity, we succeed and we thrive and lifespans are expanding, getting longer mostly, although not always in the United States. Things are amazing even when we think so little about the nature of reality and ourselves. Can you imagine where we're going to when everybody lights up to the truth, when everybody sees what's patently obvious? Oh my God, so much love, so much tolerance, so much inclusivity, so much service, so much play, so much adventure. I love you, I love you, I love you will be the mantra of every human being because they love themselves, because they see their beauty, because they know of their power, because they're connected. And that's where we're going. Happy Monday, fellow adventurers. Thanks for letting me get some air, some steam uh, out there. Um, let me tell you, I believe today is the last day for my Playing the Matrix laser focused series. It is the Rolls Royce of all that I have to offer. You like what I just shared right now? Multiply that by a thousand. Ten hours of video. If it's not a thousand times better than what I just shared, then you pay nothing. It's at Hay House. The link is below on my Facebook page. Swipe up to my bio and Instagram. Uh, it's like $399, which is 50% off for 10 hours on your dashboard for life, plus a ton of bonuses that add up to $1,000, they tell me. You don't have to get it. I'm cool. I'm doing I got it. This is, life is good. But some of you want to hear more good news. Some of you would like to study. Some of you want to get ready for post-COVID. There's a new normal coming. Don't be left behind. It's awesome out there. It's a beautiful world, and this is what we're talking about. So I, today is the last day. Go buy it. Do installment payments. And if your life isn't way better in 60 days, get a full refund. No questions asked. I'm serious. Okay. Well, lots of love from Orlando, Florida. Other great questions are coming in. Instagram, you guys ask some really amazing questions. So thank you. I got some more on Doc. Keiko and Sandra and Betsy and Megan and Mary Ann, Sam, April, Muzzletoff, and then Candy, Emmy on Instagram, the new Lacey is back, Jeb, thank you all for being here, have the best week of your life so far, it's going to get better, more truth, more light, more joy for everybody, that's the time that we chose to be alive, These are. this is a rocking era, it is so cool right now to be here. Talejo amigos, see ya mañana.